brief, but can you just say something about the obvious? What are the barriers to the Palestinians from l for leaving uh, Gaza? That would be, you know, the obvious thing to remove themselves from the conflict. So, what are the barriers? I mean, I, I can think of many, but if you could just say something about that. The barriers are Israel and Egypt, and Egypt is controlled by Israel and the U.S. So, the barriers are extreme. Uh, the last time I was in Gaza, in, in Gaza was early 2018, and I went to visit a friend and watch some uh, football, as we know it, soccer, and um, in between blackouts because there was a fuel shortage, and uh, you know his living room was filled with guys who wanted to get out and visit their families. One of them was had been there, he said, for I think two years waiting for a permit to leave, and his entire family was in the United Arab Emirates. And he the reason he was in Gaza was he just couldn't get a permit to leave through Rafa. It's so it's very hard to do. Um, and then, you know, the Israelis will try to make you leave for as long as possible so they can kind of thin the population. They like for you to go to university for a long time and not be able to come back and visit in between your studies. Um, and to become estranged from Gaza. Um, and now you have a situation where no one can get in or out because of the, the war, and it's impossible to get aid in. You know, Samantha Power, I mean, this is something I wanted to say. Samantha Power is the head of USAID. She is known for being sort of the avatar of the so-called genocide prevention industry. Uh, you know, they she always invokes genocide when you know, the U.S. wants regime change in Syria or Russia or wherever. Everyone's committing genocide except Israel. And her first book was about how, uh, you know, she, she lacerated all these Clinton administration officials, including Susan Rice, who's the domestic policy advisor or something for Biden, for, for a few, what's that? They now work together, yeah, but. Yeah, so she. Well, she went after, she was a journalist going after all these Clinton officials because they didn't quit or raise hell during the Rwanda genocide. And now Samantha Power is party to a genocide and she's playing a particularly insidious role by going on Twitter and boasting about all the aid that's being shipped to Egypt to go into Gaza. But the aid isn't going in because Israel controls Egypt and the border. So I was in Egypt with a delegation and we wanted to get to the Rafa crossing to be able to show how the aid wasn't going in, to highlight the humanitarian situation. There are five checkpoints between Cairo and Rafa. We were not going to be allowed past the first checkpoint. Our permission never arrived. You don't even have permission to go out in public and read a statement in Cairo. It's, it's, nothing can happen there. But Israel controls the last checkpoint before you get to Rafa. Okay, so all of the, I mean, this is, so important to understand because Israel's using hunger as a weapon now, along with disease. It is deliberately letting disease spread in the rainy season and in the cold to try to starve out the population. So they just simply give up. Uh, Karen Shalom is an Israeli crossing that is equipped to check trucks with x-rays, and that's where everything normally goes in. That's been closed, and they check the trucks at um, an Israeli checkpoint just on the Israeli side and then send them back into Egypt towards Arish and then they go to Rafah. And Rafah is not equipped to bring in many trucks with x-rays. Um, and so it's hard to get trucks in there, period. It's mainly for people to go in and out. And what I understand from a source very close to what's happening there is Israel's taking all the anesthetic out of these trucks. That's why you see so many children not getting, uh, you know, having, amputations without anesthetic. None of the aid is going into northern Gaza because the Israeli military is there. They're not allowing any trucks in there. And only like 100 trucks every few days are going in, which is barely enough for like one town or one city in Gaza. Um, and then you have 2 million or 1.5 million people cramped in the south. Many of them don't even know where they are, like in Rafa. And uh, they're see sleeping on the streets. They're sleeping in tents. There's intense rain. There's flooding in these encampments. Uh, it's a humanitarian catastrophe manufactured by Israel, which has deliberately taken out all the hospitals in the north and is attacking the hospitals in the south. And here's what Haaretz just reported. Um, because of the attacks on hospitals and the exposure of the population, the infection spreading in the Gaza Strip due to the 
quote unquote difficult humanitarian situation are expected to harm the Palestinians and from there spread further across the border and begin to infect Israelis in the southern settlements as well as infected soldiers with super diseases. Here's testimony by someone who you should all follow on Twitter named Iman Basher, E-M-A-N-B-A-S-H-E-R. She's tweeting live, tweeting the genocide that she's experiencing in English. Hi, this is Iman. You might know me here as a Gazan mom of three. I have lost a house, friends, family, and students. I am now appealing to all the mothers in the world. Food is running out. We are sheltering in a United Nations Relief Works Agency school. I have two sick children with no near hospitals or decent medical treatment in the area. Today I have spent three hours looking for thick winter coats for the children, and I couldn't find any. The things adults are facing and living are beyond catastrophic. Imagine what children go through. If there's any power in you, anything you can do to talk or help in a permanent ceasefire, don't stop. I am this close to losing my children to starvation, dehydration, or sickness if an Israeli sniper doesn't kill them first. So that's the siege that they're facing, but it's been a siege for 15 years at a slightly different level.